conquest of Rhodes by Suleiman the Magnificent, which was considered as an impossible conquest, increased his prestige all over the world. Even the Safavid ruler Shah Ismail sent envoys to the Sultan to congratulate him on this victory. Ahmed Pasha, who had risen to the rank of second vizier and whose name would later be known as a traitor, had the ambition of replacing Piri Mehmed Pasha, the Grand Vizier. For this purpose, he spoke against Piri Mehmed Pasha at every opportunity in order to discredit and replace him. Piri Mehmed Pasha, whom Sultan Selim I had appointed as the Grand Vizier, was, as Pechavi says, a highly intelligent and wise vizier. Even Sultan Suleiman was ashamed of him and shunned him and even said of him, whenever he would enter my presence, I would see myself discouraged in everything and hesitant in making decisions. Suleiman the Magnificent's intention was to appoint Pargal Ibrahim, who was his Hasoda Bashir, to the position of Grand Vizier. Pargal Ibrahim, who was of Greek origin, had been initiated to Suleiman when he was still a prince in Manisa. Thanks to his intelligence and his playful nature, Ibrahim, who had entered the prince's personal service, had gained not only the confidence but also the personal friendship of the Magnificent. For this reason, when Sultan Suleiman ascended the throne, he brought Ibrahim to Istanbul and promoted him to the rank of Hasodabashi. Pargal Ibrahim was one of the rare people raised by the Ottoman education system, highly intelligent, cultured, elegant, fluent in Greek, Italian, Turkish, Arabic and Persian. He loved to read the works of history and geography, especially the battles of Hannibal and Alexander the Great. Finally, Suleiman the Magnificent decided to retire Piri Mehmed Pasha, the 58-year-old Grand Vizier with an allocation of 200,000 Akche, and to appoint Pargal Ibrahim, the Hasoda Bashir, to the position of Grand Vizier. Since he was a novice in governmental affairs, the historian Jalal Zaydeh Mustafa Celebi, one of Piri Mehmed Pasha's assistants, was placed under his command. Although the rank of Hasodabasha was considered equal to the rank of Vizier, the appointment from Hasodabasha to the position of the Grand Vizier was considered contrary to the rules. As a matter of procedure, one of the other Viziers, especially the second Vizier, had to be appointed to the position of the Grand Vizier. This Vizier was Ahmed Pasha, who would later be known as the traitor. With his slanders, he had helped to remove the Grand Vizier Piri Mehmed Pasha from his post, but he could not reach his position. It was not easy to remove Pargal Ibrahim, a close friend of the Sultan from his position. Nevertheless, Ahmed Pasha's ambition to rise was unending. If he could not become the Grand Vizier, then he should become the Sultan. Second Vizier Ahmed Pasha appeared before Suleiman the Magnificent and demanded that he be dismissed from the position of Second Vizier and that he be given the governorship of Egypt instead. According to the history of Solakzade, the whole palace knew that Ahmed Pasha was a very seditious person. Since the entire court was incapacitated by his sense and tongue, everyone agreed to give him the governorship of Egypt. Thus, Ahmed Pasha became the new governor of Egypt. Suleiman the Magnificent had made the right decision by not making Ahmed Pasha the Grand Vizier, but he could not show the same accuracy a second time. It was undoubtedly a great mistake to send Ahmed Pasha, whose ambitions had already been exposed, away from Istanbul, especially to a place like Egypt as governor. The year in which the Mamluks collapsed and Egypt fell to the Ottomans was a successful but difficult year for Sultan Selim. It was the first time the Ottoman Empire had conquered a country with so much potential for trouble. After the Ottoman troops withdrew, a rebellion against the Ottomans in the region was very likely. Considering the conditions and culture of the region, Sultan Selim thought that it wouldn't be right to appoint a governor from a different culture. Therefore, he appointed Hyrabai, one of the Mamluk emirs whom he trusted, as governor here. Ayrbay was the left-wing commander of the Mamluk army at the Battle of Mejidabuk. After the conquest of Damascus, he asked for forgiveness from Sultan Selim and declared his loyalty to him. During his six-year governorship here, Ayrbay had governed Egypt by taking the procedures and laws of the Mamluk era into consideration. Therefore, the people in Egypt did not find the new situation strange. Although he had more favorable opportunities, he did not attempt to revolt like Jambir Ghazali and remained loyal to the Ottomans until his death. 
When Suleiman the Magnificent received the news of Hyra Bey's death during the ongoing siege of Rhodes, he sent his brother-in-law Mustafa Pasha, the second vizier, to this task. Mustafa Pasha arrived in Cairo as the governor of Egypt, and soon after his inauguration, he faced the uprisings of the Circassian Mamluks. Aiming to re-establish the Mamluk state, the Circassians planned to storm the court and kill Mustafa Pasha. The rebellion was led by the Sanjak base of Shakir, Garbi and Edfihir. These Mamluk Sanjak base gathered a force of 20,000 people around them. In addition, in order to increase their supporters, they wrote letters all over Egypt, declaring that the taxes collected were unfair, that if they joined them, they would not be taxed for a year, and then the taxes would be reduced by half. Since it was in the interest of the people, the number of people gathered around the rivers became quite large. They even proclaimed Inal as the new Mamluk Sultan. The governor of Egypt, Chuba Mustafa Pasha, did not find it right to fight the rebels suddenly with the insufficient forces he had in the face of the large number of rebels. For this reason, he first tried to break the rift between the Circassian base and to attract important personalities to his side. In addition, in order to separate the people from the rebels, he reduced the taxes that were heavy on the people. After the reduction of taxes, many people left the rebels. When the strength of the rebels diminished, Mustafa Pasha decided that it was time to take action and send a force of three or four thousand men, consisting of janissaries and volunteers against Inal, who first proclaimed his sultanate. Inal was defeated and beheaded in the battle at Redania. After him, the others were easily crushed. Mustafa Pacha hung the heads of two of the leaders of the rebels on the battlements of Babel Zivela in Cairo and exposed them to the public. Thus, the Mamluk rebellion was suppressed. Shortly afterwards, Ahmed Pasha, who was dismissed from his position as second vizier, was appointed governor of Egypt. Originally a Georgian, Ahmed Pasha had completed his education in Enderun. He later served as the Janissary Aga. Ahmed, who had attracted Sultan Selim's special attention by taking Selim's side during the struggle for the throne of Prince Selim, had risen to the level of Imrahar and then Baylor Bey. With his achievements, he also caught the favor of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent and rose to the position of second vizier. As his position increased, so did his ambition and insatiability. This man, who could not restrain his ambition, attempted to become a sultan when he came to Egypt, higher than the position of Grand Vizier, which he had lost to Pargal Ibrahim Pasha. In order to succeed in the great work he had in mind, he had to win over the leaders of Egypt and the Janissaries in the castle of Cairo. The first point was more important. For this reason, he occupied the important positions in Cairo and other parts of Egypt after he obtained the Mamluk base in a short time. The Janissaries in the Cairo fortress remained loyal to the Sultan and did not obey his wishes. However, they had to cower in the face of the Mamluks and Arabs. Thus, the traitor Ahmed Pasha, who took the revolting Cairo and Egyptian people behind him, besieged the Janissaries in the Cairo castle. And here, he declared that he re-established the Mamluk state and declared his sovereignty with the title of Al-Malik Al-Mansur. With this act, the traitor Ahmed Pasha was not only committing an act of treason, but also attempting to tear away a whole country that had been conquered with much bloodshed from the Ottoman Empire. As soon as he started to introduce himself as Sultan, he revived the old Mamluk organization. He sent a message to the Pope and asked for support. When Ahmed Pasha's rebellion became known in Istanbul, Suleiman the Magnificent was furious. He allocated 3,000 Janissaries to the third vizier Ayas Pasha and assigned him to suppress the rebellion. Ahmed Pasha was running out of time. He could not capture the Janissaries in Cairo and could not control the Cairo castle. No matter how much wealth and position Ahmed Pasha offered to the Janissaries, he could not make them break their oath and join his side. The Pasha resorted to all kinds of maneuvers to get rid of the Janissaries, but he could not succeed. The Janissaries killed 4,000 Arabs who attacked the castle and showed their loyalty to the Sultan. However, the traitor Ahmed Pasha learned from one of the Mamluk base that there was a sewer that had not been used for 200 years. This sewer allowed secret entry to the palace. 
When Ahmed Pasha learned about this situation, he and his soldiers managed to reach the Cairo castle by passing through the sewer in the middle of the night. Thus, the Janissaries were unexpectedly attacked. Some Janissaries were murdered in this raid. The other Janissaries somehow managed to escape from the castle and hide. Thus, Ahmed Pasha, who had captured the castle of Cairo, felt more secure. After this, Ahmed Pasha attempted to establish the government organization and imitated the Ottoman state organization in administrative affairs. He even appointed three viziers for himself. Among Ahmed Pasha's viziers was a man named Kaduzade Mehmed. Although Mehmed Bey was vizier to Ahmed Pasha, he was secretly loyal to Sultan Suleiman. It was this man who would be the one to deal with Ahmed Pasha, who raised the flag of rebellion against the Ottomans and declared his sultanate in Egypt. Kadazad and Mehmed Bey secretly gathered the Janissaries hiding in Cairo and hid them. One day, when Ahmed Pasha left the castle and went to the bathhouse, Mehmed Bey caught him by surprise and stormed the bathhouse with Janissaries loyal to Sultan Suleiman. The Janissaries shouted, Allahu Yansur as Sultan Suleiman. That is to say, they slaughtered Ahmed Pasha's men in the bathhouse with chants of, May Allah make Sultan Suleiman victorious. When Ahmed Pasha realized that he was being attacked, he left his shave unfinished, jumped from the roof of the bathhouse and managed to escape and enter the Cairo castle. He ordered the gates of the castle to be closed and to be on the alert for support from the Mamluks. Although the soldiers of his entourage were put to the sword during the sudden attack, he retreated to the castle which made his capture more difficult. Seeing that the situation was becoming increasingly difficult and that the Mamluks would come to Ahmed Pasha's aid, Gadazad and Mehmed Bey was worried. It was impossible to capture the castle before the Mamluks arrived. Therefore, Mehmed Bey found a solution by revolting the people of Cairo. Together with the Janissaries, he announced to the people that the treasures of Cairo were in the castle and if they helped capture the traitors in the castle, they could take all the gold in the castle. Thus, the Arabs in Cairo were provoked to plunder. The Arabs, eager to seize the gold, climbed the castle walls and reached the castle. The traitor Ahmed Pasha was beheaded and hung on the Zuwayla gate. He was exposed to the public, saying that this would be the end of those who rebelled against the Ottomans. In this way, the traitor Ahmed Pasha, who had caused trouble for the state, received the punishment he deserved. Meanwhile, a force of 3,000 Janissaries under the command of the 3rd Vizier Ayaz Pasha, who had come overland to suppress the Egyptian rebellion, turned back. Güzel Jakarsan Pasha was appointed the new governor of Egypt by the Magnificent. Kaduzade Mehmed Bey and the Janissaries, who succeeded in suppressing the rebellion of the traitor Ahmed Pasha, were rewarded by Sultan Suleiman. In addition, Kaduzade Mehmed Bey was granted the office of the treasurer of Egypt as a reward for his service and his fiefs were added. Thus, the rebellions in Egypt were suppressed and it was decided that the administration in Egypt would be organized in a fair manner in accordance with the culture of the region as it had been during the reign of Sultan Selim. The Grand Vizier Pargal Ibrahim Pasha, who was sent to Egypt for this purpose, stayed in Egypt for three months and listened to the troubles and problems of the people. Taking these into consideration and in consultation with the Mamluk Emirs, he drafted a fair code of law. Taxes that were heavy on the people were reduced. The Ottoman order, which was not suitable for the structure of Egypt, was expanded and laws similar to the Mamluk laws were introduced instead. Thus, the people were content with Ibrahim Pasha's justice and the Egyptian people's respect and love for the Ottomans increased. As long as Suleiman the Magnificent lived, Egyptians never rebelled again and remained loyal to the Ottomans. 